I've seen 41 movies so far this year, but this one was the best by far. I can't wait to tell you all about it next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I've been very fortunate. I've worked in front of the cameras as a pro wrestler, referee, ring announcer, and commentator. And I've also worked behind the scenes in wrestling as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant. And I bring the sum total of all those experiences, and I serve it up here to you until we make it. If you're down with that, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe right now. Today I'm reviewing the 2023 biopic The Iron Claw by director Sean Durkin. And if you were hoping to avoid any and all spoilers about this movie, let's play it safe. Just go ahead and click away now. I don't expect to fill this up with spoilers, but let's just go ahead and play it safe. The Iron Claw by A24 clocks in at just a little over two hours long. And while I intend to focus my review on the wrestling aspects first and foremost, let me just say this about the casting. Every member of the Von Erich family is perfectly cast, especially considering perpetual powerhouse Maura Tierney is playing the part of the family's matriarch, Doris. Tierney is good in everything. If, like me, you were a little puzzled when you heard Jeremy Allen White was cast as Carrie, the Texas Tornado, and you thought, Carm from The Bear is Kerry Von Erich. You'll be delighted to know he's fantastic because of course he is. And also something about the music in the film, the soundtrack. It all evokes the feel and the era of world-class championship wrestling. Tom Petty and Rush and even a John Denver track are in there and they're all used to perfection. Okay, so let's talk about the wrestling in this wrestling movie. It's hard to get nitpicky about the in-ring mechanics of the Iron Claw film because the cinematography could best be described as kinetic. There are these constant jarring camera moves which are meant to give the audience a sense of what it must be like to be in the ring performing pro wrestling. But because of this, you rarely get clear shots of the wrestling itself. And in those brief moments of stillness, when you do see the iron claw hold being applied, for example, well, the holds, the moves, they are accurate. The wrestling piece of this is well done. There are drop kicks and crossbodies aplenty in the iron claw, and they all look as good as they do in any movie. When I see movie wrestling, which looks a little bit more like badly choreographed stage combat than it actually does professional wrestling, that takes me right out of the experience. But even as someone who's been working in pro wrestling for nearly 30 years now, everything about this, including the in-ring quotient of the movie, makes it easy for me to be fully immersed in the cinematic experience of the Iron Claw. The high quality of the in-ring mechanics is due in large part to the influence of Chavo Guerrero Jr., who consulted with director Sean Durkin on all of the wrestling scenes in this movie and it was wise to enlist the aid of a member of a legendary wrestling family that has roots in Texas when crafting a biopic about a legendary wrestling family that has roots in Texas. It's true of both the Guerreros and of the Von Erichs. And unlike most pro wrestling movies, which seems to only show the wrestling in the ring when it absolutely must, here the wrestling scenes are actually celebrated and they're shot beautifully. It will make you crave better cinematic matches. The story of the Von Erich curse is a legend which has been told and retold across years, and it's been revised and embellished upon by everyone who has repeated it. When I first heard this years ago in a locker room, the version I was told lavished a whole lot more attention on things like Fritz Von Erich's post-World War II evil German gimmick, which he portrayed in the ring in the 1950s all over the US and Canada, or upon the youngest of the Von Erich brothers, Chris, who tragically commits suicide, who the film utterly ignores. But I suspect that this will ultimately serve as the definitive telling of the Von Erich family legend, because it is so heartfelt and so careful in the way that it humanizes these sometimes 
otherworldly characters on screen, despite some of the historical inaccuracies and a few of those convenient omissions. The thing I liked best about the Iron Claw is the way in which the in-ring wrestling itself and the stories about people who make their living in pro wrestling are both crafted in a way to make wrestlers feel proud, make them feel represented. It's never silly, it's never buffoonish, and it isn't put on screen with a wink-wink to kind of tell the audience that what we actually feel is that all of this is absurd and it's worthy of mockery. Know what I mean? As a working pro, I felt respected by the work of the Iron Claw, and I suspect the work they put in will help it win over wrestling audiences in a way some other wrestling movies have failed. There was more work done here than simply googling up wrestling jargon and then doing a find and replace in the screenplay document. Everything felt natural, it never felt shoehorned in. Another positive of the Iron Claw is its portrayal of Fritz von Erich, the patriarch of the von Erich family. It's a bit reductionist to simply reduce him to being a two-dimensional cartoon villain in the storyline of this film. But the Iron Claw is very nuanced. It's compassionate almost to the point of being charitable in its portrayal of Fritz von Erich. And I applaud Sean Durkin for not being so ham-fisted in the direction he chose, instead taking a more deft route. For my money, there's only one pitfall this movie stumbles into three or four times throughout its runtime. And it's this. Whenever the actors cast to play the likes of Harley Race or Ric Flair or David Von Erich are called upon to replicate the promos, the microphone work of the originals, it is clear what pale imitations they are. This film is patient in the way that it tells the tragic tale of a tragic family. And because it is so careful, so meticulous, it really lands some stiff punches by the time we arrive in the final act. It is unflinchingly raw and moving as it draws to a close. And if you don't get at least a little emotional as this thing is wrapping up, I'm worried about you. In my opinion, the Iron Claw swings for the fences, and this one is a home run. To love pro wrestling is to love its history. And whether this is a chapter of professional wrestling history that fascinates you, or it's one which is brand new to you, you're going to want to check out The Iron Claw. Check out my book, Pro Wrestling History, Six Threads and Sixteen Decades. It follows six specific historical threads across more than 150 years, and it's on Amazon.com right now. Also appearing on screen is a link to my Patreon. I would sure appreciate your support.